Hello, so today we're going to make a gradient texture and I'm going to show you how to make the gradient texture. We're going to use Photoshop, but you can use any program you want. And then we're going to use the edit this scene right here. It's a tree that I modeled with a little podium, kind of like a park setting. And we're going to unwrap it. We're going to move the UVs around. I know that's difficult for some people, but I'm going to make the process really, really, really easy. And so let's get started. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop. This is a 64 by 64 um, pixel canvas, by the way. If you want to follow along, it really doesn't matter what size your canvas is, as long as it's not too small, because you'll start getting uh, really pixelated type effects, which might happen here, but it's okay. So what I want is four squares because we have four things to color the leaves of the tree the trunk of the tree the grass and the stone and so it's going to be a green another green and then a brown brownish red and then some gray so Let's get to that. So what I want to do is make a rectangle. This rectangle is going to be 16 wide, 16 by 64 high, which is the height of the canvas. Now you'll see that it, it doesn't fit and that's because with the rectangle tool selected you can see that the stroke is enabled so you want to go to stroke click stroke and then click no stroke it's the white box with a red line through it and then we're just going to position this how it needs to be positioned Make sure this is 16 by 64. And we're going to name this tree leaves. With this selected, with this box selected, this layer selected, go to FX at the bottom of the layers panel and then go to gradient overlay. It'll bring up a layer style box with a lot of different options, but we're gonna focus on gradient overlay. And you'll see in the middle, it created or populated a gradient. This was the last gradient I used. So you'll see a lot of options, but let's just focus on clicking the gradient for now. So click the gradient. And after you click the gradient, you'll see the gradient editor pop up. And you have all of these options now Photoshop has a lot of beautiful gradients already. For example, I'm going to go into my blues and I'm going to click this. Look at that. That's really pretty. And then we can go to our greens. So we have some green stuff. Then we can go to our pastels. Really pretty pastels. Very beautiful. We can go to our iridescent. So you can kind of go around the gradients. And kind of experiment and we can also use, we can make our own gradients but we can also use these as bases for um, like as a foundation for creating our own gradient and that's what I'm going to do today so I want to choose a nice green something that's really dynamic this is really pretty but it's not as bright as I want it to be um, I want something that's going to really catch the eye and so I think this one is the one so once you select it, you'll see these, this bar. And the bar will have two, it'll have four boxes. I think this has to do with the alpha or the transparency. So the more black or white it is, um, the more or less transparent the color will be. And so these boxes um, are the colors that the gradient will transition between. So we have a yellowish color right here and a green color right here. And what 
we can do to create your own stop is you can press right here with the little hand that pops up to go from an arrow to a hand that's pointing and click and you create a stop right and so that stop is the same color as this color over here but we don't really want that what I like to do is add a white to my gradient over here because you never know when you're gonna start messing with the edges and you might want to highlight the edges but for this we're gonna go from the top of the bottom of the tree so it's gonna be a little bit more um, it's gonna be lighter at the top and darker at the bottom so I always keep that in mind so you want to always keep that in mind light to dark light to dark low poly modeling is really great when there's gradients added to it. Most illustrations are great when you add gradients to them. Okay, so I have that color. I have my yellow color. I have this. So I wanna create another stop. So I'm gonna create a stop right here. And I wanna make this darker. So I'm gonna bring this down, bring it down, bring it down. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's pretty pretty sometimes I like to mess around and move this slider just to see what would happen if I'm going down a little bit maybe a more bluish green okay that's pretty that looks nice what if I mess with this how would that look so it's a lot of experimentation okay this looks like a nice a nice gradient I like this I like this a lot oh and in between when you click on a stop there's gonna be a diamond and this diamond will um, allow certain colors to influence the gradient more so if I let go you'll see there's not really a gradation between these two colors it controls that gradation between the colors so I'm gonna put that like that and it changes back so I'm finished with that so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to call it grass. Now if we hop back into Blender, we'll see that the grass is in a circle and I want a circle <laughs> gradient, right? So let's see how we can do that. So I am going to, we can't see it. So I'm going to move it over here and I'm actually going to edit this square with the tool selected. I'm going to make it into a nice square. I'm not worried about the exact size of it. And I'm going to go into gradient overlay with this layer selected gradient overlay. And we're going to go into some of these options. Now, usually the, th the dither box will eliminate that banding that you see, but we're at such a low resolution that it doesn't even matter. Like it can't really affect it. So I'm, I'm gonna focus on style. It's right under gradient, style. And right now it's in linear, which means it's going in one direction in a straight line. The gradient is in a straight line. I wanna change that to radial. And I can mess with the scale of this now the um, underneath the tree is going to be darker and then it's going to maybe become a little darker on the edges it's going to go from dark to kind of light to kind of darker closer to the edges and so what I want to do is go back into my gradient and um, I'm going to Let's see. With with this selected, with this selected, you can click other parts of the gradient, right? The eyedropper tool will come up and you can copy that color. And so around the edges, remember, around the edges, it's going to be darker. And in the middle, it's going to be dark. Uh, 
I just want to play with this. Make sure I get something that looks. Ooh. If you cre accidentally create a stop, click the stop, drag up, it'll delete the stop. I want something a little bit like this. Just playing with it, getting it to a place that I want. I might want to create, let's see. And what's cool is that as you create these gradients, you create new colors. So then I can click right there and see that's a lighter color. And I think I might go for this. This seems about right to me. Okay. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone because I'll be here all day <laughs> fiddling with it and not leaving it alone. Okay. So now that we have that, let's focus on our tree trunk. So what I want to do is I want to duplicate, right click, duplicate this layer. We're going to call this tree trunk. Sorry if you can hear my clickety clacking. I'm going to move this to the right. And let's move this up. I'm going to move this to the right and I'm going to select the gradient overlay. Now, unfortunately, there's not a lot of browns here. There's some reds but that doesn't go into it doesn't we don't have any browns so what I want to do is go for something brown and let's do that So we have a nice, rich gradient of browns. Now, I don't know if you've noticed what I did, but I already had a gradient selected. And then with that gradient selected, it already, that was the last gradient I had selected. So it already allowed me to just edit. And the nice thing is that I can choose similar colors, colors that are around that same family just by moving the slider up and down. And so now what I'm going to do is make this a little bit darker honestly a little bit more red because I feel like these are too close to brown and I want them to be more saturated with red that looks nice that looks nice actually this is our lighter color so we want it to be Okay, that looks good. We're, we're doing things. Okay. Now, we're finished with that. Let's right click, duplicate. We're gonna call this stone. Move this over here. Um, actually, why don't we Let's see, with the rectangle tool selected, let's move this right above this. And then let's come back in here with the rectangle tool selected and move this here just to make this look nice. So I'm gonna take up the entire um, square that we have here. And I'm going to now edit the stone. So the gradient was already selected, our last gradient. So I'm just going to play with these colors a little bit. I'm going to delete this stop, move this here, mess with this stop by clicking it. And let's go to, let's go to the blues. Let's go to the blues. And this is a nice 
middle way for a stone color. And with this selected, with this stop selected, I'm gonna go here, choose this, and then let's see, I'm gonna bring this down a bit into the blues. I'm trying to, we're blue, we're blue today. Okay. And now I'm going to select this, go here, make it a little bit more white, lighter. And I wonder, can I play around with this? Cause it's, it's nice, but it's not nice enough. Can I go into the purples? Yeah, I like that. We're gonna go a little bit more purplish this a little bit darker. Okay, I know that might seem weird, but I just like to be a little bit more creative with my shadows. Okay, and now it looks like we have our gradient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to file and then you can quick export as PNG and so after you quick export it as PNG, we're gonna go back into Blender. Okay, so we've created our gradient. Now it's time to apply our beautiful gradient to our tree um, or to whatever object that you're working with. So the first thing you wanna do, well the first thing I'm gonna do is um, show my overlay so I can see everything that's going on and see the outlines and be able to select my objects we're going to make a material because the pro the objects need a material um, that's what a texture is you apply you put a texture on this material and then it you can see the colors and everything so we're going to go to material properties with the object selected go to material properties press new and then let's name this material tree. Well, tree. Okay. Next, I'm going to change this shader. So right here where it says surface, I'm gonna change it to emission. Now emission shaders don't process the light information. It's just basically the, the base color, the albedo, what they call it in other programs. So it's just gonna be that raw, that basic image file. We're gonna go to color, image texture. You'll see, you'll see a lot of different types of selections. So you wanna go to image texture, right? open I put mine on my desktop select the image the gradient texture find it select it open image and if you're in the preview mode the viewport shading mode that I'm in you won't be able to see the texture that's been applied the material that's been applied so press Z and then go to material preview and bam there's our texture <laughs> it kind of looks it's kind of you know it's kind of abstract kind of pretty we can kind of leave it like this and I'm, I am completely joking this is ugly don't do it so what we need to do is arrange this texture arrange these faces on the texture correctly so let's go to the UV editing tab you should see layout modeling sculpting go to UV editing and in the UV editing tab well, first, let's, if you don't see your image, if you don't see the texture that we opened, you want to go to this triangle right here. It'll say browse image to be linked. It's next to new and open. And you want to go to choose the image. So you, you press this, it'll have a drop down and it'll show all of the images that are in this textures that are being used in this blender file. You're going to press that and then your image will show up. Here's my image. So there's a few different ways we can approach this. If you press A, 
it might show your um, UVs already projected onto the image. But what you want to do is press A in edit mode, go to UV, go to smart UV project, and press OK. Or you can go to unwrap. And you'll get different effects. There's different projections. There's a Q projection, right? UV, cylinder projection. That's crazy. UV, sphere projection. And the one that I like to use the most is project from view. So we can have a lot of different views in Blender. That's the front. This is the back. Sides, sides, top, bottom. I control that by using the numpad, right? And so this is by pressing one, this is by pressing three, the top is by pressing seven, and you can con use control plus those numbers to do the opposite. So if this is the front, this is the back. If this is the right side, then this is the left side, and this is the top, and then control seven would be the bottom. And that's if you have a numpad. If you don't have a numpad, you have to go in and simulate those settings. I'll probably make another video, a very short video, on how to actually do that. So, um, I want my gradient to be from the top to the bottom. That means I want to project from this view. It's going. What, what's going to happen is I'm going to unwrap it, and it's going to unwrap from this view, so it's going to be very... Um, it's going to be flat, linear, and that's what I want because I've made a linear um, gradient. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these things. I have it in separate chunks for convenience. I'm going to select all of these, UV, project from view, and now you can see I have my little tree right here. Now you can edit these, you know, move them around however you want and stuff. and do all different types of stuff with them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press A and move it. Now, it's good to note that when you are texturing, this image has two axes, you know, the X axis and the Y axis. Well, I think this is Y and this is X. So the Y axis and the X axis. And so one of the things that I like to do is I'll press S and then scale on the x-axis and that will allow me to scale on the x-axis and then I'll position it scale it on the x-axis make sure it stays in that box and then hold on because our material preview is not selected so make sure your material preview is selected and sometimes what I like to do is I will actually turn off the show overlay so I can see what's actually going on and so what I'll do is now S and then Y, and you can see it's a really, really pretty gradient. Look at that, guys. Now, we can even go a step further. I'll turn on the overlays. I'll just press that one, and then I'll move this one down a little bit. And then I'll press this one, and that's why so it fits and then I'll move that even further down and let's make sure the top matches All right. so that's a little that's prettier so you wanna you can move these UVs around what I'm doing is I'm pressing L L to choose a chunk and then you, if you press L, it'll select multiple. And what I could do is, um, well, that's a little bit too complicated for this video. So we're just going to focus on, we're just going to focus on making something like this. But what I could do is something cool, like select all of these. Let's see, select these. If it lets me do it. And then bring them down for SY. And 
you see you kind of create an under part of it real nice. And I can do it for these two if Blender will allow me to select things. And so what how I'm selecting them is with Alt Shift. So Alt Shift. And then let's turn off these overlays. Let's see if we can make this look cute. So if we oops. Let's see. Let's select these first. Let me bring them up. Do something like that. So again, it's a lot of trial and error. And what I'm doing, I pressed R, trying to get this correct. Okay, that's interesting. And what I can do is the same thing for this. So I'll click in face mode. I should have said that earlier. I'm in face mode. That's why I'm selecting all of them like that. And then turn off my overlay so I can see what I'm doing. Make it a little darker there. All right. So we did that. And I actually want to change this. Turn these overlays off. And you can also select individual. individual vertices. So sometimes I like to go to the very top of a model and then bring that all the way up. Right? Something like that. That might look weird to some people, but I like it. See, we have this nice little gradient. And we can do the same for our log. So we're going to take the log. You want to press one on the numpad. And I am going to go to UV project from view. So that's a good thing to note is that you can select different parts and project them in different ways. So I could come back here and project this in a different projection. And projection just means how the faces are laid out on this image. So we have the back and the front because I projected from view. I'm going to do S and then X. I'm going to bring this down and let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's really cute. Oh, we have a little problem right here. So it's always good to, so that was probably a little too low. Let's see. So just note you will make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. It is not okay to get all down about your mistakes. Just make your mistakes and move on. Okay, so you know what's interesting? Hmm, I should have probably, I probably should have done a, um, a a different type of gradient for the uh, trunk, but that's okay. We're learning. If I was doing this by myself, I would spend a lot more time. doing this and so we have a gradient for the tree now just like now this is what I would do if I was kind of by myself I would kind of go into here you know maybe make certain certain parts darker you see that so I would probably go in make certain parts a little darker you know and stuff yeah so 
we can do stuff like that. Now, I was selecting without actually looking because I've been doing this enough to where I know what faces I'm going to select and stuff. And then we can come in here, choose these individual faces, and move them down. Right? you know, make the tree a lot more dynamic looking, right? Oh, we're in, see, if you, if you go into this preview mode, let's turn our overlays on. I'm doing a lot of different things right now. I need to go slow for you guys. So let's go back into this mode, make sure we're in edit mode, make sure we have our tree selected. <laughs> All right, it's going through a few hiccups. Now we're back though. All right, SY, make it darker and stuff. So you can see we can get really stylistic with this stuff. Just take your time, enjoy the process, have some fun, drink some lemonade, and just have a good time making stuff look pretty. That's what it's all about. <laughs> um, Okay, so uh, now nah, I just want to do more. I have to stop myself because I'll be here all day. Okay, so we've done things with the tree, the tree. So now what we can do um, is the grass. So let's do the grass. I'm gonna select this. Now, I have to make a new material for this entire thing. So I'm gonna go new ground and I'm going to go to the emission shader, color, image texture, and this time I don't have to open up because I can just choose this dialog box right here. It says browse image to be linked. I wanna link this image and you can see just like before, it's not projected on correctly. What we wanna do is because this is a whole new object, we need to go to, first we need to be in edit mode. Then we need to go to UV, let's see. We can unwrap it. Well, first we need to have everything selected, so press A, UV, and then you can just unwrap it. Okay, so this is an important part. I don't know if I, I'll cut this part out, but let's go to mesh, clean up, delete loose, mesh, clean up, merge by distance. Let's see, does that work? Or can we go to edit mode, object, convert to mesh? Project from view. Image scenes are going to be added. Okay, so that fixed that. So I was having issues, but I used Smart UV Project. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to. With my main part of my island selected, I'm gonna press seven 
and I'm going to UV project from view. So notice that mistake I made. I was unwrapping it. Blender didn't like the way I was unwrapping it, but you, you can do a smart UV project which I just learned deals with the fact that all of these items right here, all of these objects right here are kind of separate. They're not together. All right, so now since I have that selected, I'm gonna go here and I am going to kinda, I wonder can I, let's see, let's experiment. Let's go to UV Q projection, what, no. No, we're, we're not going to do that. But you can see that first let's go out of that. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, look at that. And I'm wondering, can I select these and move these over here? Select these, move these over here. Because I really want the edges to be shown. But the edges are not being shown the way I want them to be shown. But I guess that's what it's going to have to be. Actually, it's kind of working. Move these over here. Move these over here. Actually, there's a there's a better way to do this. S Y zero, well S X zero. So if you select a row, you can even them out on whatever axis. So I get S X and then zero. And so right here I'm going to do S Y and zero. Bring it down. S X zero. S Let's see if that works. If not, we can always change it back. Does it look okay? I think it looks great. Let's change that. Okay. I think it looks just fine. It's a little wonky, you know. It's it, it's okay though. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And with this bottom part that we're not even going to see, UV project from view A. Move this over here. We're not even going to see the bottom, so it doesn't even matter. Now with these stones, I'm going to select, I'm going to press A, and then I'm going to press Shift L to deselect. Um, the middle part and then I'm going to UV project from view all of the stones and so now you see all of the stones are projected in the same way it's kind of cool looking so then I'm going to select all of these stones S X S Y and as you can see let's see if we can take this off now the stones are, ooh, that's cool looking. Let's make it so that the very tip of them is light. Let's move this. So you, you see I'm just playing around with it, playing around with it, seeing what I can and I cannot do, seeing how this works for me. Is it working for me? Now I'll keep doing it. Now, if I could select the vertices on the inside, now that would be ideal. So what I want to do, I'm going to go back in, and I actually, let's see, can I select every single one of these? And then I'm going to do a little trick. If you accidentally select something that you shouldn't select, always control Z. I'm gonna select these. So I have them all selected. I'm going to be, do control plus, and it did work. So control plus will um, 
advance the selection so it'll select the faces next to it. Now, because I want the inside to be a little bit darker. So I'm going first, I'm going to change my overlays. And then I see, ooh, look at that. See, so I make these edges a little darker. And then kind of make the inside darker. Yeah, that's looking nice. So now I've walked you through the entire process of how I would texture something. There's a there's a few things I would change, but for the most part, this is how it's done. I know this video was a little long. Um, I might speed up certain parts of it, but um, thanks for watching. I'll have a lot more videos coming. Um, just stay uh, subscribe, subscribe to me, and press that notification bell so you can see stuffs. All right, y'all have a good one.